normally, this is exactly where I am on Sunday mornings. I'm on the couch in the green room, which is actually backstage of the theater. And normally, at this time, the band would be out on stage, and they're leading worship through singing, and I can hear everyone's voices, and they're beautiful, and I'm here on the couch, or maybe pacing around in the green room, and I'm either going over my notes, or I'm, I mean, I'm reading over the verse again that I'm going to teach, or I'm praying, or I'm just getting my mind right, or you know, maybe I'm drinking like 12 cups of coffee, just getting hyped, getting ready. And then I'll hear the band start to pray out. So then I'll get up and I'll approach and I'll come to the stairs and I'll be ready. I'll be in position. I'm on deck. I'm getting ready to go in. And then the band wraps it up and I slowly transition out onto stage and the lights are out and everyone's taking their seat. And then bada bing, bada boom, the lights come up. I'm up here and like, I feel like nine times out of 10, my mic's not on. So I'm like, <laughs> all that one's like, everybody, let me just turn this on real fast. And then I'll turn my mic on and I'll be like, come on tech booth, get it together. But really, I just forgot to turn it on myself. And then we get into the lesson. And uh, maybe I start out asking, like, how's everyone doing? Or I'll start out with a funny story. And we're laughing and together. And we're, co and we're connecting already. And I get to look out. And I get to see everyone's face. And I get to see all of our group leaders. And it's just it's one of my, it's one of my favorite times of the week. And that's on a normal Sunday. But we haven't had a normal Sunday in, like, uh, almost two months and nothing about the last two months has been normal. And so I'm up here now, and you guys aren't here. And I look out, and uh, I realize that I really miss it. I miss being a church gathered. I miss being a body of believers gathered. I miss, uh, let's see Let's see if we can, we can like uh, give a light out of the room. So normally we've got our senior girls at the tall table here. We've got, uh, we've got like ninth and 10th grade girls, I think here and uh, here. And then we've got uh, over here, we got like eighth grade boys, some ninth grade boys. Then back here, I think we got like 10th and 11th grade boys, maybe ninth, 10th and 11th grade boys. We got shenanigans here. That's why I have to call you out sometimes. I mean, I love you guys, but I have to call you out. And it's awesome when we can gather together here. There's something powerful and profound about it. And there's something that, uh, that I miss about it. So here's what I want to talk about today. The church has always, always gathered together. But then often throughout history, as you read the Bible and as you follow the history of the church, the church, while being a church gathered, has also been scattered throughout history, throughout the Bible. The church has always gathered, but then also been scattered. And every time the church is scattered, the church has stayed connected. The church has gone forward. I've, I've said this a million times. The church is sturdy. It's endured. It's overcome so much. The Lord's hand is over the church. Jesus is pulling the church forward. The Holy Spirit is the wind at the church's back. The church holds up. The church endures, even when the church is scattered. And in times of being scattered, the church has always found contentment in being scattered. But the church has never been complacent in being scattered. Scattered, And the church has always anticipated and looked forward to being gathered together again. And so we're in a situation and we're in a season where we used to be a church gathered. And now we're a church scattered. And I don't want us to hate this time. I want us to like this time. I want us to find contentment and be content in this time as we're a church scattered, but not be complacent in this time. Not just be okay with this and, and just think, this is how it's going to be moving forward. I want us to anticipate and get excited about when we can be a church gathered again. And so I want to talk about, from the Bible, how the church, the body of believers, has always gathered together. And in fact, in the Old Testament... The children of Israel always gathered together. 
Um, in the book of Exodus, you can read about this. They, they met together and they would celebrate. We talked about this last week. There's these feasts and these celebrations and these holidays where they would get together and they would pray and they would sing and they would remember what God had done for them. And then as you continue reading the Old Testament, the, the people that God had called out of slavery in Egypt, the people that God had called to follow him and to communicate his message to the world, he has them build this thing called the tabernacle, which is like a giant tent. It's like a, it looks like a, like a, a fireworks stand. And they would go there and they would gather together and they would pray and they would sing and they would remember what God had done for them together, corporately. Then they go on and they build this temple, this giant, uh, incredible structure, this, this, this lavish structure, this, this incredibly impressive, beautiful, ornate structure. That's a more permanent structure. And in the temple, they gather together. And they pray and they sing and they remember what the Lord has done. And they celebrate that. And so there's been this movement. And then, man, you can even go to the New Testament. And the people of Israel, they met in these things called synagogues, which were like little, like miniature temples away from the temple. So if you live too far from where the temple was in Jerusalem, you would meet in a synagogue. And in fact, that's what Jesus did growing up. Jesus met in a synagogue. Um, by analogy, I'll, I'll, I'll give you this. So like if North Metro were a temple and say you lived not in Marietta, but you lived like in uh, somewhere in North Georgia, like Blue Ridge. Well, then maybe what you could do is build something in Blue Ridge, build a building, have a storefront, meet in a school. And you guys would meet there to have church while you're too far to actually go to North Metro. Maybe you only went to North Metro for like special holidays like Easter and Christmas. That's what a synagogue was in Jesus's day in the New Testament. And people would gather together in synagogues, in their local synagogue, and they would pray, and they would sing, and they would remember what the Lord has done. And again, Jesus' first sermon is in a synagogue. Jesus went to the synagogue. Jesus believed in gathering together with other believers. And so that's what he did. But then as we read about the life, the ministry, the death, the resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus, we see that Jesus was fulfilling all the Old Testament promises in himself. Jesus was going to be the embodiment of God's redemptive plans. Jesus was going to be the, the fulfilled Messiah, our Lord, our Savior, our leader. And the church, the gathering of believers, would actually be a gathering of people that recognize Jesus as Lord. And so then we see the birth of the church towards the end of the New Testament. And the disciples go out to all the corners of the world and they, and they form these churches, these bodies of believers. And guess what they would do? Believe it or not, they would gather together and they would pray and they would sing and they would remember what Jesus had done for them. They would actually look back at the Old Testament and they would remember, oh, the Lord's kindness and faithfulness and how he was writing the story that would all lead up to and culminate in Jesus. And then they would tell the, the, the parables and the teachings of Jesus. And then they would talk about the, the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus. And they would talk about Jesus's ongoing mission for the world. They did this as they gathered together. It's always been imperative, always been central to faith that a body of believers gathers together. And so the same is true today. That's why we gather. But throughout the history of the church, as we said earlier, the church has gathered together, but then also experienced seasons of being scattered. And so let's look at some examples from scripture of when people were scattered. And so one of the first ones that we actually talked about last week are the children of Israel in the Old Testament. They actually got taken out of their land because they failed to follow the Lord or obey his commandments and to keep the Sabbaths and like a billion other things. And they're actually taken away from their temple that they had built, that permanent structure, and they're taken into a foreign land, into exile. And in exile, they have to try to stay connected to one another and connected to the Lord. And so in exile, they didn't have a temple. They didn't have a tabernacle. They would try to find ways to celebrate and have their feasts and festivals and holidays. But even sometimes they'd be persecuted because of that. And so they would try to, they would try to stay connected to one another and to the Lord however they could. And they would do this through prayers and reciting scripture and retelling of what the Lord had done for them. But they would also look forward to what the Lord was going to do to deliver them. And they even get to this place. Um, we can read about this in the book of Nehemiah where they, we find out they kind of write letters to one another and they stay connected that way. And so even this guy named Nehemiah, he, a group of people go back 
into the land of Israel from exile, they start rebuilding the city. They start rebuilding the temple. And actually, Nehemiah gets a letter that lets him know that's going on. And this is encouraging to him. He's able to, while he's in exile, he's able to stay connected through letters, through correspondence, through communication. And that's in the Old Testament. They eventually go back into the land, rebuild the temple, rededicate. But there's a New Testament example too. And we actually talked about it in the first week of the series. We talk about my man, Paul, the, the apostle Paul. And Paul, towards the end of his life, is in a place called Rome. And in Rome, he's actually under house arrest, which I think is interesting because we're kind of under house arrest now. So there's kind of an interesting correlation there. He is actually sitting at a table and he's chained to this table under constant guard. And my man uses this time where he is, he is in, in himself a church scattered. He cannot gather with the church, right? Or just like the children of Israel in the Old Testament, they can't, he can't gather together to pray and sing and celebrate and retell what God has done. No, he's, he's scattered. He's, he's, he's quarantined from everybody. He's socially distanced from everyone, not by volition or choice, but by force. But what Paul does is just like the children of Israel in exile, he remembers all the prayers he grew up with. In fact, um, the people of the Jewish faith, they would pray three times a day, stuff from the Old Testament scripture. Uh, he would uh, sing. There's, a, there's another story where Paul's in jail and what he does is he prays and he sings because he doesn't have a Bible with him. He doesn't have a scroll with him. And this is what Paul would have done while he was in, under house arrest. He would remember the prayers he grew up with and he would pray, remember the songs he grew up with and he would sing. Even though he can't gather with the church, he would still do those. And then he would find ways to connect with people however he could. So even the prison guards that were watching him, he would share the good news with them. He would share the gospel with them. He would share all that God had done to redeem humanity, to bring us back, to, to restore his peace on the earth. And, to, and he would tell them about, hey, I mean, I know you think Caesar is Lord, but actually Jesus is Lord. He would tell that to the people that he was with. <laughs> so however he could stay in contact and connected to people, even if it was guards that didn't share his faith, that's who he stayed connected to. He found a way to retell the story. Uh, so then he didn't stop there. My man took this time towards the end of his life while he was chained to this table under house arrest to write letters to other churches. And there was like three or four that he would write to, maybe more. We just have record of three or four. And he would write to them and give them instruction and give them encouragement. And, and again, he would send prayers to them. He actually, he, in the letter to the Philippians, he even includes a song, something they call the Christ hymn that was later sung in the church. And I think it was actually sung during Paul's time. And then he would retell the story of what the Lord has done for his people and how Jesus was the fulfillment of all that and the carrying forward of all that. So Paul found a way to do this through communication and correspondence. Well, then let's talk about the other side of the table. The people to whom Paul was writing. The early church, actually, would gather together like we talked about. But they also would go through seasons where they were no longer a church gathered, but a church scattered. And especially later on in the New Testament, the early church, the earliest churches, on, they had to undergo persecution. And the Roman Empire didn't like them going around squawking about Jesus is Lord. And so they'd be like, no, nah, Caesar's Lord. I don't know what you guys are talking about. You need to cut that. And so they would persecute them or because the early church wouldn't worship false gods and idols of the Roman culture, they perceived them to be out of line and they would persecute them. So what the early church did is they became a church scattered. And in being scattered, they would try to stay connected to the Lord and connected to one another however they could. So if they were in prison, if they were in under house arrest, if they were um, socially distanced by force from one another, they would pray and remember the prayers they grew up with. They would sing and remember the songs that, that told of God's faithfulness and they would retell the story. And they would gather however they could and speak to whomever they could. So the early church was like a multi-site, multi-venue, multi-size body of believers. So sometimes larger groups of people would meet outside, like by rivers. You can read about that in the book of Acts. Sometimes they would meet in each other's homes and it would just be a couple of families. Uh, sometimes they would even go to like the synagogue because many of the early church believers grew up in the Jewish faith and they went to synagogues like Jesus did, like we talked about earlier. And so 
as someone who was in the Jewish faith and realized, oh, Jesus is the fulfillment of this and the carrying forward of this. Okay, well, I mean, if we need a place to meet, I got a place. And so they would meet in synagogues. Paul, when he wasn't in prison or under house arrest, he would go to synagogues. Uh, people in the early church would meet in marketplaces if they didn't have like a centralized building. The early church, however they could, they met together to stay connected to the Lord and connected to one another. So yeah, they, were, they would um, say, still pray their prayers and they would sing their songs. And they would retell the story and then they would communicate with whoever they could, however they could. And just like the children of Israel in exile, just like Paul under house arrest, the early church scattered would write letters to each other. In fact, they would write letters back to Paul. It's not like Paul just always wrote letters to the early church. They would write letters back. Now, we don't have these correspondences, but Paul makes reference to them in his letters. So there's, there was this two-way street of communication so that the people could stay connected to the Lord and connected to one another. So I hope you see there's like some common threads here. The church, God has always called his people to be gathered together, to come together, to pray, sing, retell the story, found themselves on scripture and God's word and God's law and be rooted in God's love. But then the church is also many times scattered and in their scattering, they have to hold on to what they had when they were gathered, the prayers, the songs, the scripture, the stories, the testimonies, they had to hold on to all that. And then they had to communicate with that with whoever they could, however they could. They had to use correspondence and communication and technology that they had at their disposal to do that. Well, uh, <laughs> we're in like a very eerily similar situation. And so today, we are no longer a church gathered for the time being. We're a church scattered. And in his kindness, in his providence, the Lord has provided a way, provided a means for us to gather together. And this is something that I was uh, working on this week that I haven't actually put together before. But we never really talk about this. There's a correspondence in being the church scattered and technology. And I think the Lord has always been provident in providing technology to help the church stay connected, stay um, to connected to him and to one another in times when the church was scattered. So right now I'm in North Metro Church's studio and we have technology like cameras and we got like cool fancy lights and we've got like a cool background here with cool fancy lights. Everyone loves cool, fancy lights. And so the Lord has given us this technology. So, I mean, I think in his providence and his, his provision, so that during this time when we're not a church gathered, but a church scattered, we can stay connected to the Lord and to one another. And technology has always been a way and something the Lord has provided to do that. For instance, even when Paul was under house arrest writing letters, and even when the early church was being persecuted and having to write letters, one of the reasons that correspondence was easier in the Roman Empire is because of the technology of the day. Rome built roads that connected the world. They built trade routes that made uh, transmitting letters or materials way quicker. Uh, the boats were quicker than they had ever been. Like every piece of te transportation technology was updated. So word could travel, I mean, more quickly than it could before, in the Roman Empire, so Paul could communicate with the church. There's been other times in church history where this thing was invented called the printing press, and it allowed people to actually print the Bible and take it with them. So at several different points and different junctures in history, when the church gathered became the church scattered, people were actually able to still have the word of God with them. What's more, it allowed for missionaries to take the word of God, to, to take prayers, songs, and stories and scripture to all corners of the earth because they had the Bible with them. Or, or maybe even believers that were living in places where like, oh, like they, they would never hear the word. Well, the printing press, the technology allowed for these people that were scattered from the church to actually still become part of the church. In the last century, we had the advent of radio and TV. And I've heard lots of stories, or, and now this isn't recent, but like back in the day over the last hundred years, people groups have been reached in countries that are very opposed to the Bible, very opposed to following Jesus. People groups have been reached through the airwaves of the radio or through TV. And the Lord has provided technology so that people scattered from the church are still connected to him and to one another. And now we've got, we got smartphones and we've got laptops and we got social media and we've got all this incredible tech 
that has actually, even before COVID-19, given us this opportunity and occasion to correspond with one another, just like the letters and the ways they stay connected with the children of Israel in exile, just like Paul did writing under house arrest, just like the early church did as they were scattered. We have this technology. I think it's part of the Lord's goodness, kindness, grace, and provision. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a cool time to see all this come together. We're able to live stream now. And I know for today, I mean, there's people that have like moved away from North Metro. I mean, well, first of all, with COVID, we're still able to kind of be a church because of technology. I know people that have moved away to different states, different countries from North Metro that can still stay connected because of technology. I know of a couple of churches where they actually have prison ministries where they live stream the service into a prison. So they kind of have like a church plant in a prison or they have a church. I know another church. They have a church over in Europe that they just live stream all the content to because there's not a lot of churches in that area. So the Lord, when it comes to taking the church gather, gathered and then transitioning to the church scattered or even reaching people that are scattered from the church, the Lord has always provided technology. And that's a good thing we should celebrate. So that's why I don't know if people are like, I don't like technology. Well, okay, the Lord's always used it. And so even in this time, we're bringing content to you that I shoot on my smartphone that will be on our Instagram feed, that will be on IGTV, that will be on YouTube. The Lord is allowing us to use technology to stay connected as we are a church scattered. And we should be grateful for that. And I encourage you guys to engage with this, to share it with with your friends and share it with your group. And in fact, we're doing this new thing with groups where not only can you stay connected to your group with um, your group me messages or your group texts, but now we're starting this week, your leaders will hit you up about this. We're starting Zoom groups. So you can meet together through the Zoom app and still meet face to face, but to an extent. So here's my encouragement to you. During this time as we were the church scattered, the Lord is providing. And we have ways of still connecting with the Lord and connecting with one another. That is good. That's great. We should celebrate. So I want you to find contentment in this time. But I don't want you to become complacent that this is just how it should always be moving forward. And I want you to have excitement and anticipation for when we can transition from being a church scattered to a church gathered again. Because even though technology is great and the way we're connecting now is great, Nothing is like the real thing. Nothing is like actually meeting together. People uh, provide power and energy to any situation. So just think about it like this. Like if you went to a pep rally and there was two people, that's going to be kind of lame. That's not going to be very hype. If you go, I don't know, to a football game and there's like three people there, that's not going to be very hype. People add passion. People add energy to what's going on. And so it's kind of that way with church. It's great. It's so good that we have these means of communicating with you guys and we have this technology. But man, like people, people just infuse passion into something. People infuse energy into something. And so there's no replacement for the real deal. Um, just think of it as like, <laughs> I don't know, listening to um, an album on your earbuds while you're, I don't know, while you're on an airplane versus going to a concert. Like it's just people infuse things with passion and energy. And so I want you guys to, to engage in Zoom groups. I want you to engage with this content, but also realize that it's never going to be the same as the church gathered. Church scattered, man, we have ways of connecting and communicating, but I look forward to the day where we're the church gathered. And I need, I'm not even just talking about meeting in that room with those lights and a bunch of people in that hype kind of environment and that exciting uh, community of the saints. No, I'm even talking about small rooms like this where we sit across from each other in person. Remember when we used to do that? There's power and potency to that. And these Zoom groups are going to be great and a great way to connect. But again, it's going to be us connecting as the church scattered. And we need to be content in that and find good in that. But we don't need to be complacent with it. We need to have anticipation and excitement for when we can gather together again. Because, man, it's nothing like just meeting in person. We need each other and we need to be able to meet in person. Think about it. If you're lonely, if you're feeling isolated, there's nothing like meeting with someone in actually in person. If you're wrestling with like doubt or, you know, something you're struggling with in your faith, man, I don't know, sometimes it's, it feels a little weird to share that on Zoom where if you're sitting across from someone looking them in the eye, that's a different game. So 
in this time, here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to follow us. Like you follow someone on Instagram. I want you to follow us. Engage in all these different platforms we have. And be good with it. Be grateful for it. And be content with it. But do not become complacent with it. Because we need to have anticipation and excitement for when we can transition from being the church scattered to the church gathered. And so just think about it this way. Again, it's almost like you guys are listening to the album now on your phone, right? You're listening to like a, an album. But I want you to look forward to the day when you actually get to go to the concert, when we get to gather together to, to hear this and to sing together. It's almost like you guys are, um, are reading the book. Like it's a very like personal uh, interface and medium. It's almost like you guys are reading the book now. But I want you to look forward to the day where you're actually able to see the book put into film, like a movie, and like going to see a movie at a movie theater. Because you already, you already know going to see a movie at the movie theater is always more hype. Uh, Brian Ellison and I went to go see Avengers Endgame together and like several times, several parts of the movie, people just stood up and started clapping and it was hype. Yeah, <laughs> if we had read the screenplay of the movie, it wouldn't have been as hype. It would have been good and we could have enjoyed it. And if that's all we had, then that's all we had. But it was way cooler meeting in person and, and seeing it on the big screen. And so where you guys are at right now, it's like you're reading the book. It's like you're reading the screenplay. But get ready for when you get to come back and we gather together and it's like going to see a much anticipated movie in a movie theater. It's just a different kind of energy. So what I want you to do now is I want you to connect online, looking forward to the day where we can gather in person. I'll say that again. I want you guys now to connect online, looking forward to the day where we can gather in person. Be content right now but don't be complacent. Have anticipation and excitement from when we transition from being the church scattered to the church gathered. So let's end with our question that we've ended every sermon with in the series. What if, what if after this whole thing, this time of being the church scattered, when we have the opportunity and occasion, and I don't know when this is, I don't know if it's going to come in phases and seasons, but whenever we're able to be the church gathered again, what if there's this renewed excitement and fervor and zeal and hype level for actually gathering together? What if people that before were like, man, do I got to go to church again? What if people are just like way more hype about it, 10 times more hype about it, and they can't wait to go and can't meet to uh, wait to meet together? So what if the bad that we're going through? What if the Lord's working a good from it and bringing about this renewed desire to meet together? So my hope and my prayer is that during this time that you guys are sufficiently meeting the church or missing the church gathered and sufficiently excited about the day where we can get back. So in the meantime, in between time, be content, don't be complacent and get excited. And don't forget That's right. We love you guys. Can't wait to gather with you again. And uh, hang in there. Grace and peace to you as you live as the church scattered.